Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about this breaking today. Bank of England just announced they will be using Ripple. Wow, Bank of England is going to be using XRP and Ripple it seems. Okay, so where do I start? So first of all, before I go through the article, let's just look at a bunch of people who are spreading this news. XRP Vell. If you think that them saying this will include a new core settlement engine to enable a range of new functionalities and capabilities to promote more efficient wholesale settlement is not XRP. What do you call that? This is conflation, by the way. So he's conflating this claim to be XRP right off the bat. Then you are a complete bleep bleep and a straight up retard. This is from that new digital pound report. And I'm going to be jumping into this report in this video as well. All over Twitter, Bank of England will use XRP, Ripple and XRP and then they highlight this claim or this statement or this paragraph in the document which I'm going to be talking about. And then we have this XRP Today article, XRP Daily article. And by the way, um, XRP Vail isn't the only YouTuber that's spreading this. There's quite a few of them. He's just one I'm just using for an example in this video. And it's being spread all over the place on YouTube, Twitter, Discords, that Bank of England has announced they will be using Ripple. So as you guys know, I am known for my research when it comes to, I have a high standard of research, let's say, when it comes to claims like this. So the burden of proof, I'm going to teach you guys what I look out for. When I see a claim like this, the burden of proof is them to prove to me that Ripple is being used. They've got to show me evidence where the Bank of England has announced that they are using XRP and Ripple. And let's see if that evidence is provided. I don't have to prove that they're not using XRP or Ripple. They made the claim. So the burden of proof lies with them. So on Tuesday, the Bank of England, along, along with their HM Treasury, have published a consultation paper. And this consultation paper is this paper here confirming they are currently using Ripple. Okay, so that's claim number one. In the consultation paper, it confirms they are using Ripple. Let's see if you can prove it. There is no clarification whether or not this also includes XRP. Okay, fair enough. However, considering that Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse announced earlier this year that more than 50% of all Ripple net volume is going through the XRP ledger, we can assume this joint project between Ripple and the Bank of England is more than likely an XRP enabled project. Okay, so we're jumping the gun here, but let's continue. The consultation paper that was published today was titled The Digital Pound, A New Form of Money for Households and Businesses. A big part of this consultation paper is the fact that this is an official announcement of a digital pound CBDC project that Ripple is included in for RTGS. Okay, so they're using Ripple, Ripple's included in this paper for RTGS, and the Bank of England has claimed that they're using Ripple. Another tweet, just in, Bank of England launched a digital pound CBDC project. Okay, there's nothing, there's no misinformation in regards to that tweet. This is absolutely huge for XRP holders. Back in 2017, Ripple announced that they chose, they chosen to be a part of the Bank of England FinTech Accelerator. Okay, Ripple is confirmed to be working with the Central Bank of England for at least six years and now an official CBDC project has been announced that Ripple is a part of. I mean, I don't know if this claim is true that Ripple has confirmed to be working with the Central Bank of England for at least six years. It could be true, it could not be true, I don't know. Um, I haven't looked into it. But anyway, let's see whether they're using, where is the proof that they're using Ripple. So there's this section here and I'm going to go through this section in this video but here it mentions cross-border synchronization a joint project with ripple demonstrating that synchronization affects transactions in two different simulated rtgs systems can be achieved leading to the incorporation of synchronization functionality into the roadmap for renewal okay there's still no claim or evidence that they're using ripple and when i talk about this in context you'd understand why it's also good to keep note of the fact that in 2022 ripple significantly ramped up advertising Blah, 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 blah. So a bold claim, but no evidence. So let's look at the actual document, the digital pound, a new form of money for households and businesses. 
And what what we're looking for is evidence that this that the Bank of England is using XRP or Ripple. Now, firstly, I would just like to say is the digital pound is actually a retail CBDC. And it tells you here, a digital pound would be a retail central bank digital currency. Now, there's a difference between retail CBDCs and wholesale CBDCs. Okay. Now, retail CBDCs are for the common everyday people to use. Wholesale CBDCs are what central banks would use for cross-border transactions between each other. Retail is what we would use domestically. So this whole document is mostly about the digital pound is about being a retail CBDC. So we know when it comes to CBDCs, XRP is mostly for wholesale, and that's what they're targeting, building central bank digital currencies for the wholesale um, CBDCs and to, um, to be a part of cross-border payments between different central bank digital currency wholesale CBDCs. It's not really catering for retail CBDCs. However, I guess the technology can be used for retail CBDCs, any, but that's not really its target. But anyways, let's continue. Digital money for use by households and businesses for everyday payments issued by the central bank, the Bank of England. The Bank of England and Her His Majesty's Treasury plan to accelerate our work on the technology and policy architecture for a digital pound. So the digital pound is mostly for retail. And I'm going to just scroll through to certain parts of the document that I want to go through here, the roadmap. So the indicative digital pound roadmap has three phases. Now, some people are claiming that the digital pound will be ready this year or is all happening now. And firstly, it's for retail. So even if it is launched this year, it doesn't necessarily mean XRP is going to be used because when it comes to retail transactions, it's all domestic. There's no need for XRP. It's really on the the wholesale where XRP is going to be mostly used. So if it is used, so let's see here. Now it's three phases. Right now they are in phase one in 2022, the research and exploration phase. So what does that mean? They are researching the idea, the concept of having a digital pound retail CBDC. It's not even ready. And this phase one is going to be about a year. And then they're going to proceed to the next stage. We have decided to proceed to the design phase and invest further in technology exploration of the proposal model. So this year is going to be phase one where they're going to do explore it. They're going to do the consultation paper and technology working paper, economic functional and technology analysis. And they're doing research and exploration on the concept of having a retail CBDC in phase two. And phase two is estimated to be between 2023 up until 2026. And that's the design phase. So technical development work and proof of concepts on the basis of the proposed model. So whatever they learn and gather from the research phase, in phase two, they want to design the concept, a proof of concept of a CBDC, developing architecture and the digital pound platform technical design and actually developing the architecture. Now, phase two could be between 2023 to 2026 and in phase three and they say the earliest is 2025 is when they plan to build it out and that is developing the prototypes and have live pilot tests so bearing these phases in mind at the earliest okay we are likely to have a retail digital pound is after maybe 2026 probably but the chances are it will be by 2030 if we're going by these phases and they take their time in the design phase they want to make sure it's all designed appropriately and properly and that lasts a few years and then they build it out there is no retail cbdc based upon this document that's being released in the uk in 2022 and that's not me saying it that's not me saying it this is what the document is telling us now with that being said let's look at the article for the word ripple because remember ripple is going to be used okay so it comes up twice in this article i want to read this point in context so let's scroll to the actual beginning and this is something that people don't do in the xrp community they don't read things in context which is why they take things and misrepresent it and they do and they do a lot of conflation as well so let's go and read this in context so as i was saying when it comes to xrp 
it's mostly related to wholesale CBDCs. And it's funny that Ripple is mentioned under Box H, and Box H is about wholesale CBDCs. The whole digital pound is a, a retail CBDC. So there's no need to really use XRP if it's a domestic CBDC. So let's look at the wholesale CBDC and retail and wholesale CBDC. Page 63. The bank and HM Treasury are consulting on a proposal for a retail CBDC that would allow central bank money to be used in electronic form for everyday payments by households and businesses. Wholesale payments are high value transactions typically between financial institutions including the settlement of securities and foreign exchange and this is the market that XRP is likely tackling. At present the bank enables wholesale settlement so right now Wholesale settlement is occurring by banks through, how is it doing it? The Clearinghouse Automated Payment System, which is CHAPS, which is their RTGS system, and it's real-time growth settlement service. So through CHAPS and their RTGS system, they are able to settle wholesale payments, and that's how they're doing it today. Whose participants include financial market infrastructures? And when it says whose participants, these participants are the participants that also provide the liquidity for the RTGS system. Every RTGS system today, and they're doing it by correspondent banking, has participants that are that have accounts with the RTGS system or the central bank that is housing the RTGS system. And these participants provide liquidity for the system. And the participants are financial market, inf include financial market infrastructures. So let's continue. So it's telling us how it's doing it today and that is via correspondent banking. They are settling payments and they're using CHAPS, RTGS, and the participants, okay, also provide liquidity. And it's not saying all that in this, in these few lines here, but you have to look up, look up, watch my other previous videos, and then you can piece it all together. I've done this research since last year. So the balances held within RTGS are a direct claim on the Bank of England and therefore a form of wholesale central bank money as set out in diagram B2. So they consider the, the balances that they have today as a form of wholesale central bank money and the European bank said the same thing that what they are using today even though it's not necessarily a CBDC is still like a CBDC because it's a digital form of money and it's by it's basically um housed by the central bank and they see it like a cbdc something similar to it like a digital form of value even though it's not built on a blockchain if that makes sense new technologies present the opportunity to innovate in the provision of wholesale money to financial institutions so here they acknowledge that dlt systems present an opportunity whereby they can innovate in how they provide wholesale money to financial institutions. So if they want to evolve from how they're doing it today, then there are, there are new technologies like DLT systems that they could upgrade to. Now, firms and public authorities, including the Bank of England, have been active in exploring them. So the Bank of England has been active in exploring new innovative methods through the enhancement of existing infrastructure or the concept of establishing a new wholesale CBDC platform. And it's very similar to what, there's, to what the European Central Bank has said before, where there are ways that they could improve wholesale CBDC movements. And one way, which is the quickest, would be enhancing their exi existing system by making it able to interface or be interoperable with other DLT systems, or they could go out there and build a whole new DLT based system. Now the first method which is enhancing existing infrastructure is quicker for them to do than going out there and building a DLT infrastructure from scratch for themselves and that would take longer and it mentions here the same thing that they could either enhance the existing infrastructure or there's, they could establish a new wholesale CBDC platform which is basically building it out from scratch. And this is for the wholesale side. We're not talking about the retail digital pound. This is separate, which is why it's in a separate box talking about wholesale CBDCs. So there are many different models under investigation and different potential solutions or technologies to deliver enhanced provision of wholesale settlement and central bank money. So as you can see, the bank is aware that there's various ways they could go about this. 
So far, they haven't said, OK, we are using Ripple to do this. There's different models under investigation. So they're, so they're looking at different ways, approaches and models and different potential solutions and the technologies that are out there in order to enhance wholesale settlement in central bank money. And then they mentioned transparency, availability, efficiency, atomicity and access. So in delivering those outcomes, a wholesale CBDC could facilitate the innovation and experimentation that is taking place in wholesale markets, such as, such as the development of DLT-based exchanges and settlement systems where tokenized financial securities could be issued and traded. Okay, now let's continue. Remember, this is the part where Ripple is mentioned. So I'm trying to find where it says the Bank of England announced they will be using Ripple. I'm still waiting for the evidence. There are three broad approaches that could be adopted to realise these benefits. So one, if they're going to go about building a wholesale CBDC, there's three ways or approaches they could do this. And that is one, enhancing the existing system, which is their existing RTGS system that they're currently using. They could enable private sector innovation, and that is by using Ripple and other private sector options out there. It's not just Ripple and establish a new wholesale CBDC platform. And the third one is to build it themselves. So these are the three methods that they are aware of in terms of that they could branch into and to enhance their wholesale CBDC system. So one, enhancing existing systems. The bank already provides central bank money in electronic form for wholesale settlement. As I said, it's not a CBDC, but it's a digital form in how in how they do it and it uses rtgs service and they already do this today the bank is improving this service through a transformational initiative to renew and enhance the current system at the heart of this is the delivery in 2024 of a modern flexible and efficient core settlement engine which will be modular flexible and based on open standards ah oh, this reminds me yeah look at this veil vale basically takes this part where it talks about the new core settlement engine and says it's XRP. If we go to the document, this is under what section? Enhancing existing systems. How can it be XRP when it's under the enhancing existing systems and it's not even and it's not even under enable private sector innovation? Do you get my point? If it's XRP, then it would be in a, under this section here. But they're talking about what are they talking about here? their core settlement engine core settlement engine and they're talking about it under enhancing existing systems because the core settlement engine is not xrp or ripple it's the central bank's current system that they are enhancing unless you're telling me xrp veil that today their current system is xrp okay Poor research in this space, unbelievable. At the heart of this is the delivery in 2024 of a modern, flexible and efficient core settlement engine, which would be modular, flexible and based on open standards, including ISO 20022 for messages. So here we have it. They're saying that they, are, they have an RTGS system and they are improving this system. They are enhancing this system. And I did a video on this last year as well. Um, go and check it out. And this system is called the core, the new core settlement engine. And it's basically an upgrade to their current RTGS system. And they plan to deliver this in 2024. And it's going to be able to handle and process ISO 20022 messages. It's going to be modular, flexible, and based on open standards. And I'm going to talk a bit more about it as well. Because one of the things that this system is going to be able to do is be, when it's flexible, it's going to be able to interface and synchronize with DLT systems. But in and of itself, it's not XRP, it's not XRPL, it's its own RTGS system that they are enhancing to be more flexible. So following consultation with industry, the bank is developing a roadmap for RTGS beyond 2024. This would deliver greater digit digitization of wholesale settlement and represent a fast and well understood approach to realizing many of the benefits commonly associated with a wholesale CBDC. So the RTGS system that's coming up beyond 2024 is not necessarily using a wholesale CBDC. However, what they're learning from this is that it will deliver greater digitization of wholesale settlement and it would represent a fast and well understood approach 
to realizing many of the benefits commonly associated with a wholesale CBDC. So from it, they would learn the benefits that can come from having a wholesale CBDC, but in and of itself, it's not using a wholesale CBDC. The key features that will be delivered in the improved service are, the bank will increase the transparency, efficiency, and speed of information exchange through adopting the ISO 20022 standard. Okay, so they will use ISO 20022. The renewed RTGS will be more available and capable of extending near 24 seven operation. So it would be 24 seven operating. The banks plan to explore which approach to operating hours delivers the most value to industry. Okay, and the roadmap for RD, RTGS beyond 2024. So they have a beyond 2024 roadmap. And in this roadmap, what do they want to include? Proposals to deliver atomicity by allowing third parties using DLT to coordinate transactions between RTGS and other ledgers. As I was saying, they want to make the RTGS system able to interface, synchronize and be flexible with other DLT systems. Not, not just necessarily, I'm assuming as well, the XRPL. However, not just the XRPL because they want it to be flexible with various DLT systems from my understanding of this. Okay, and this is beyond 2024. So don't expect this to happen in 2023 or even 2024 this is their plan for the rtgs system beyond 2024 so it could happen so this could be 2025 onwards okay the bank continues to explore this via project meridian and i haven't looked into project meridian except briefly and from what i understand project meridian is a way is like a bridging mechanism between rtgs systems and dot systems so again don't quote me on this because I'm not too sure. I should have done, I should have um, looked into Project Meridian before making this video, but I would look into it anyways going forward. Or well, let's see if I can quickly Google it now. So here we are on the BIS website and let's see what Project Meridian is about. It says Project Meridian will develop a prototype synchronization operator, an intermediary platform that connects counterparties and coordinates the settlement process directly in central bank money. So it's like a bridging platform, by the sounds of it, an intermediary platform that acts as a bridge that connects counterparties and counterparties could be two traditional systems I take. For example, the RTGS system from the UK to something else and coordinates the settlement process directly in central bank money and it coordinates the pro process in central bank money. Now, I don't know much about Project Meridian and how it functions, works what, or any of that. I have not looked into it. I have not looked into it at all, but that's what Project Meridian is. And the bank of, but I would like to say this here, we know Ripple can do that. So if they are using Ripple, why wouldn't they just say the bank continues to explore this via Ripple? But nope, they said Project Meridian. And this would have been a perfect time to prove the claim that the Bank of England has announced that they're using Ripple for their CBDCs. Um, bank of England just announced they'll be using Ripple. Yeah, this would be a perfect time to claim it. Anyways, they haven't yet. The bank continues to explore this via Project Meridian, a joint initiative with the BIS Innovation Hub London Centre, which is prototyping and testing the end-to-end -end flow of synchronised settlement. So Project Meridian is doing this, prototyping and testing the end-to-end -end flow of synchronised settlement, and they're using that for their RTGS system beyond 2024, they're working with Project Meridian for this. So now we have option two, enable private sector innovation. Now within the RTGS renewal program, okay, the bank's focus has been to develop our roadmap for ongoing improvements to the RTGS service. Now the Bank of England was improving their RTGS system. They wanted to create this new core settlement engine. They wanted the system to be more flexible, more adaptable, more powerful, in terms of the with the way it delivers payments and as part of their program they even did they ventured into private sector innovation and they looked at what's on the market for them that was a part of their developing of their new rtgs system and it's also for ongoing improvements to the rtgs service so they did look at what's out there in the private sector to see how they could improve their RTGS system. So in line with industry feedback and incorporating elements from previous proof of concepts and experiments, now the Bank of England has done proof of concepts 
with the private sector and experiments and what they've included on how it could benefit their RTGS system that they're upgrading is two things that they've mentioned. The DLT proof of concept. So they did a project to explore and demonstrate basic functions of wholesale settlement using DLT. A project to explore and demonstrate basic functions of wholesale settlement using DLT. The bank built on this work via a second exercise working with Batten Systems. So they worked with Batten Systems for this DLT proof of concept. Clearmatics Technologies Limited, R3 and Token. So they worked with four different solutions. The Batten Systems, Clearmatics Technology Limited, R3 and Token. To ensure our renewed RTGS service could connect with systems based on DLT and other innovative technologies. So, th so their new RTGS system is going to be flexible and it's going to be able to connect to other DLT systems. And they were able to do this through their proof of concepts by learning from other solutions out there like Batten Systems, Clematics Technologies, R3 and Token. They didn't even mention XRP or Ripple in this, but we can just assume that if the RTGS system is going to be able to interface with various DLT systems out there, then they are very likely going to be able to interface with the XRPL or whatever other DLTs as well out there. So to ensure our renewed RTGS, RTGS service could connect to systems based on DLT and other innovative technologies. So that was from their proof of concept number one. And this is what they learned, how to make their RTGS more adaptable and flexible from this proof of concept. And then they did a proof of concept number two. And when I say number two, I mean another proof of concept. And this was with for cross-border synchronization. And this was a joint project with Ripple, demonstrating that synchronized Forex transactions in two different simulated RTGS systems can be achieved, leading to the incorporation of synchronization functionality into the roadmap for renewal. So from this proof of concept that they did with Ripple, so bearing in mind people are highlighting this and saying, this means the Bank of England is using Ripple. No, it doesn't, because all they are doing here is referring back to their Bank of England 2017 Ripple proof of concept that, th that they did with Ripple. That's what they're referring to. And you can look at it here, the Ripple proof of concept. We carried out a proof of concept with Ripple to explore the synchronized movement of two different currencies across two different real-time growth settlement systems linked using Ripple Connect and the Interledger protocol. So moving two currencies between two different RTGS systems and they did this they did this proof of concept with Ripple. We wanted to demonstrate how this kind of synchronization might lower settlement risk and improve the speed and efficiency of cross-border payments. And you can read it here. And from the end of it, you can see that basically everything went to plan and it worked as intended. So anyways, that's what the proof of concept was about. So in this document, they mentioned that they did this proof of concept with Ripple and what they learned was synchronization of FX transactions between two different simulated RTGS systems and it can be achieved. And this led to them incorporating the synchronization functionality into the roadmap for renewal. So with their RTGS system, they're going to incorporate synchronization functionality. Now, does that mean they are going to incorporate the technology that enables synchronization functionality into their RTGS system? as part of their beyond 2024 roadmap of improving their RTGS system? Or does it mean they are using Ripple? And by the sounds of it, and from what I'm reading, it sounds to me like what, what they've learned from this synchronization proof of concept is a feature that they want to have as part of their RTGS system. This synchronization functionality feature, it is not, it's not telling me that they're going to be using Ripple for their RTGS system or anything like that which is what people are implying. People are saying that their new core RTGS system is XRP. No, it's not. The Bank of England did not come out and say, we are using Ripple and our RTGS system is XRP. No. What they're saying in this document is that they've worked with the private sector and they've gained lots of information, key benefits from these proof of concepts that they've done with the private sector and they are using this to improve their current RTGS system and they are going to have a renewed RTGS system in 2024 and beyond and this renewed RTGS system 
is going to be ISO 20022 compliant with the messaging and it's going to be adaptable and flexible and it's going to be able to interface with various DLT systems and they learned how to do that from the proof of concept that they did with other DLT systems on how to basically settle using DLT systems and how to connect to these systems and they're going to use that what they've learned from it and incorporate it into their RTG system and they also did a proof of concept with Ripple to learn how transactions can be done between two different RTGS systems in a synchronized manner. And they're going to take what they've learned, the synchronization functionality, and they're going to incorporate it into their RTGS system, which is non-DLT based, by the way, so that their RTGS system is also going to be able to do synchronization between two different RTGS systems out there, if that makes sense. It's not saying they're using Ripple, or they're using XRP, neither is, neither is their RTGS system Ripple or XRP. However, with that being said, it's still good news because their RTGS system is going to be a flexible RTGS system that can leverage or, inter or interconnect with DLT systems, connect with them, interface with them. So it's still good, but let's just not say it's XRP and Ripple when it isn't, it's separate. And what people are doing, they're using this proof of concept and they're saying, oh, the RTGS system is using Ripple, is XRP. If that's the case, if you're going to take this out of context and claim that they're using Ripple, then why not take this paragraph out of context too and say the Bank of England is actually using Baton Systems, Climatics Technology is using R3 or Token for their RTGS. Nope, everyone ignores this paragraph and jumps straight to the second, the XRP community, and say, oh, they're using Ripple to do this when they're not. They're just using a feature that they've learned from Ripple, from this proof of concept, which is synchronization, and they're adding it into their own system to enhance it. Building upon this collaboration with industry, the bank has developed new policies and structures to enable the benefits of innovative technologies to be delivered by new types of private sector firms. So here, as you can see, they're learning from what they've discovered from the proof of concepts. And based upon that, they are developing new policies and structures from their proof of concepts to enhance their own system. Okay, the bank continues to engage with private sector firms to understand potential new models of wholesale settlement. So they're still engaging with the private sector to be able to understand ways to settle wholesale payments and how these can be supported going forward. Alongside this work, the government announced in April 2021 the creation of a new sandbox for firms exploring how to use technology such as DLT to improve financial market infrastructure. The sandbox will be delivered jointly by the bank, HM Treasury and the FCA and will launch later in 2023. So they are still doing work with the private sector. They're doing a sandbox in 2023 and if they are using Ripple and it's a done deal, why are they still exploring? So the third option is establish a new wholesale CBDC platform. So there's three options. And the third one is instead of using the private sector, instead of enhancing what they already have, which is what they're actually doing, how about we just establish a whole new wholesale CBDC platform? And I think this is what they're least inclined to do. It's probably the hardest and the longest. A new platform could enable a wide range of new technological capabilities. However, in the UK, this approach would have a long lead time compared to the renewed RTGS, which will start delivering in 2024. So exactly, this is why I think they are least likely to do this or less inclined to do this, because starting from scratch would take a long time for them. And they are all saying this, the European Central Bank said the same thing, building a new whole system is going to be harder, more difficult, take much more time than leveraging what's already out there or then making sure what they have can basically interface or interconnect with other DLT systems. And the bank is basically saying that here, that if they were to go and build a wholesale CBDC platform, it would take longer to do than compared to just upgrading their RTGS, which is what they're doing and it will be delivered in 2024. So the global central banking community continues to experiment with technologies associated with wholesale CBDCs, including establishing new infrastructure. The bank engages closely with such initiatives to evaluate whether wholesale CBDC technologies offer benefits to the UK, and if so, whether they might 
whether they might best be delivered via the renewed RTGS service. See, here you go. If so, whether they might best be delivered by the new RTGS service or whether new infrastructure might be needed. So you can see that they're still evaluating what's best for them and they're saying that they're going to see what's best for them, whether their new RTGS service, whether it can deliver wholesale CBDCs or whether they need a new infrastructure, whether that might be needed. In particular, the bank is closely involved with the work of the BIS Innovation Hub, especially in, in its London centre, so it is well positioned to understand and learn from the range of experiments and approaches being trialled internationally with regard to wholesale CBDCs and wholesale settlement more broadly. So as you can see, that's that. So from the three outcomes, enhancing existing systems, enable private sector innovation, or establishing a new wholesale CBDC platform. What we know today is that they are enhancing their existing systems and they are still working with the private sector innovation to learn from them. And they are keeping an eye out on whether establishing a new wholesale CBDC platform is the best option going forward or whether they should just stick with enhancing their RTGS system. And we know that from the, what they've learned from the private sector with their proof of concepts with Ripple and all the other DLT systems is that they've learned ways on how to improve their existing system. And this existing system, the RTGS system, their new core settlement engine is going to be delivered in 2024 and it's going to be able to interface and interconnect with DLT systems out there because they've learned that from the private sector how to do it and it's going to be able to synchronize with other RTGS systems when it comes to atomic payments from what I understand um, between two RTGS systems it's going to be able to do that as well with the synchronization functionality because it learned how to do that from the proof of concept with Ripple and it's decided to add that capability to its RTGS service. Did it say anywhere in this document that they are using Ripple? The Bank of England is using Ripple or XRP? No. Did the new core settlement engine, okay, which is under the heading of enhancing existing systems, okay, is this new core settlement engine XRP? It's 100% not XRP or the XRPL because it's not even in the private sector innovation sec section. It's under enhancing existing systems where they, where they talk about the core settlement engine. So that's also this article is complete nonsense. It's misinformation. And every YouTuber and influencer that you see going out there spreading Bank of England just announced they will be using Ripple. And then they share this section which is basically talking about the proof of concept as proof that they're using Ripple and they totally ignore the above. They ignore this whole section in context and this is what the XRP community does over and over again. They don't know how to do proper research. They do poor research and when they do read the documents, they don't even understand it. They just look for everything to conflate to XRP and then they run with it. And when people like me come along and try to give you the correct understanding, Based upon my perspective, and you can always do your own research, I don't try to twist the words or misrepresent what the documents are saying. I am the troll. So maybe trolling is the new way forward, it seems. Because if the people that are doing proper research are the trolls, then what does it make people like XRP Vale that's coming out and saying everything is XRP? Anyways, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so as to not miss my next video. Take care and goodbye.